So as a lot of you are aware, I'm a big Commodore fan. In fact, I uploaded earlier on today a C64 mobile emulator setup guide, and I've pretty much covered most main systems regarding Amiga emulation. I've done Amiga FSUAE, Amiga WinUAE, Amiga AmiKit and WHD load. Uh, the list is endless. I've even covered Amiga, Pi Amiga, the setup for Windows. So one of them, oddly enough, I've not covered is Amiga Forever. I've covered this for the C64 version of Forever some time ago, but I've not actually looked at Amiga Forever. So what I've done is purchase the plus edition of this, and I'm going to talk about what this is and how it works. And it's a really surprisingly good setup, and it's probably a really easy entry point for people that just want to play some Amiga games rather than going out and buying off eBay one of these Amiga 1200s, which is as my wallpaper right now, uh, which is gonna cost you something in the excess of 300 pounds or 400 pounds. So a very cheap solution Amiga Forever is for people that just want to run these games. So what I'm gonna do in this video is go through the whole process of you and probably convince you to actually go and buy this package from Amiga Forever and trust me it's really gonna be worth it so check this one out <laughs> Okay, so before I actually get in the setup guide today, just be sure to hit notification, subscribe and like on this video if you like what you see today. And be sure to check out my other Commodore setup guides. Uh, not only have I done standalone emulation content for Amiga or C64, but I've also included them in a range of front end packages for Windows PC. So I've done a lot of Commodore work on my channel at this point. So what we're going to do then is head over to the Amiga Forever website site and for those of you who watches my videos quite regularly you'll often hear me talk about Amiga Forever and this is where to grab your kickstart ROMs. So Amiga Forever then we got three editions of this. So if you're looking at a very cheap way of entering this really cool system your cheapest point of this is going to be the value edition. So as we can see here the value edition actually includes workbench images and kickstart ROMs. So even if you don't want to use Amiga Forever, it's still a very important website to buy those kickstart ROM files from as well as workbench files. And if we look further down, it'll also tell you that the value edition won't offer support for the more sophisticated and modern Amiga systems. So for those of you wanting a modern up-to-date Amiga experience, then the value edition of this isn't going to get you that. And addition to this, the value addition is going to also exclude several of the features which we can get in the plus and premium editions. So if we next go to take a look at the version I got, which is a plus edition, uh, this comes with more than 300 megabyte of pre-installed games and demo C production. So for people who likes those demos, which people create just for fun and to push the Amiga systems to their max, just like they do on C64, then you can get a lot of these included with the plus edition. And we've also got more operating system ROM files included in the plus edition, as you can see just here. And we've also got the Amiga 1000, A590 and A4091 boot ROMs and also extended support for CDTV and CD32. So as we can see already by the plus edition and linking this up with what's included in the value edition, then by far the plus edition is going to be your best way into this to get you a lot for your money. So let's look at the premium edition and the premium edition is pretty much everything what's included in the plus edition. Although the premium edition is going to get you a physical disc and DVDs. So that's all there is to the differences in the Amiga Forever packages. And also on the website, if we just go down to games and demos, you've got many links here for uh, downloading different Amiga games. So you've got Dream 17 Factor X. So let's take a quick look at Ami Sector 1, for example. So lots of resources here you can be linked through through Amiga Forever. So I'll leave this up to you to discover yourself. So let's actually go into the setup. So like I said, I've got the plus edition of this and I'm gonna just start from scratch for anyone new to Amiga Forever. And the current version is Amiga Forever 10. So I'm gonna just press next. 
and just accept the terms in the license agreement and press next again. And for this, I'm going to include everything included with the plus edition. So complete. But if you want custom, if there's only certain components you want installed, just go to custom, press next. I'm going to go for complete, like I said, and press next. And now just the install process. And if you get a little window pop up asking you uh, to make changes to your device, just press yes. Once that process is fully complete, just leave this to checked. Open the Amiga Forever Player. Let's just press finish on that. Okay, you just pop in your license key and just press next. And the next window you're going to see is this view options. So you've got essentially an option here to change how Amiga Forever looks. So as we can see, as I just go through these just here, you're going to get modes of columns, tiles, and arcade. But if you select one of these and you don't like it once we're inside of Amiga Forever, you can change the look of it once we're inside. Uh, you've also got the skin color here you wish to have whilst you're working this. Uh, this won't show any demos of that, but again, we can test that out once we're inside Amiga Forever. And we can also change the theme color to light and dark. So personally, I prefer this on the dark version, but that's up to you. And again, we can change that once we're inside. So press next. Now, what this next screen is telling you is pretty much all the different file extensions that Amiga Forever accepts. And Amiga Forever has got its own file extension types, which is famously the RP9, uh, just like the C64 Forever system. Uh, so this is going to take all your ADF files and your .lha WHD load files and pretty much convert them into its own file system. And the games work perfectly well with this system. So that's just to warn you about that. And it also gives you the option of taking away some of these associated file types. So just have a read through that and press next. And just press next again on this screen. And entirely up to you. I'm running actually got the latest of this, so I don't need to check for updates, but you can check that on launch. So after you've done this, just press on next. And that's it. You're finished the installation process and you should get a little registration tool window pop up. If you see this, just press on yes. And here we go then. So we're into Amiga Forever. And like you see, I just clicked on the maximize window and this takes us into a full screen mode. So we got lots to look at here, and I'm just using the cursor on my keyboard. So uh, let's take a look at Workbench 3.x. So I'm just going to launch this one. And here we go then. So very snazzy stuff. And it really is as simple as that. And that's why I say probably right next to the Amiga FSUAE emulation system, uh, probably Amiga Forever is probably your easiest entry point into it. There doesn't really require much tampering around with files and editing things and putting files into this and that. Uh, things are pretty much good to go. So this is 3.x. And, you know, you can play around with this. And let's just take a look at the screen mode, for example. If we go on the screen mode, if you're interested in using this version of Workbench, let's just put this onto a higher resolution, uh, say 1080p, 32-bit. And I'm going to just go to Use. And there we go. So we're now into pretty much a full screen with a higher resolution. Under Work, we have a couple of different folders. Inside of these, we got lots of different bits and pieces, including the Picasso 96 in Opus 5. And if I just close this one down, and remember on Amiga, to close down the windows, it's actually on the top left. For those who's used to Windows PC, you'll notice there isn't any red boxes with crosses on. So let's just close that up here. And also, if we go under System, we got a range of folders or drawers as Amiga systems refer to them as. So lots to do and see with this workbench. So to exit out of this, 
all you need to do is just right click and just drop down to quit and let go of right click. And that brings us back into Amiga Forever. So we've also got Aros. So if you don't know about Aros, it's pretty much someone's almost Linux-based creation of Workbench. And it's a free Linux distribution. And as you can see, it needs to download this. So let that just download. And once that's been completed, just press close. And let's open this up. And here we go. So like I say, pretty much similar to Amiga Workbench, but Aros is uh, just someone's creation or community's creation. So for whatever reason, you might be interested in experimenting with Aros, but you pretty much get the same drawer contents as you do in the 3.x Workbench that I just booted up. And down to screen mode. And again, very similar setup to Amiga Workbench. So I'm going to just put this one on Pow High Res List and use this. And there we go. But anyway, that's entirely up to you if you want to mess around with Aros. Now, we've also got the classic Workbench 1.3. And for those of you who owned an Amiga 500, this one look, will look very familiar to you. So let's just launch this one. And here we go. So I won't go through this in too much detail, uh, but you pretty much got the same setup, although this is a much older version of Workbench. As you can see, it looks much more primitive uh, compared to 3.x, which I just used. So if you just check under the Amiga files and systems folder, which you'll find, very easy to find, just go to systems. Uh, you pretty much got the Workbench pre-installed with every system or every model. So from the Amiga 1000, Amiga 500, 2000, 3000, 500 plus CDTV, Amiga 600, 1200, 4000, Amiga CD32. Uh, you've even got a Walker prototype version as well as installing the PPC operating system for Amiga 4000. So there's so much on there. And like I say, the good thing is with this is you don't need to set these up, which can often be very complex. So let's get on to the games because that's why a lot of you is probably here. Uh, so if we go to the games folder, we got lots of pre-installed games. Like I said, if you go for the plus or premium editions, you actually get 300 megabytes worth of games. So a lot of these are granted a lot of homebrew games and you probably wouldn't have heard of a lot of these here. But there is some games which you might have heard of. Uh, for example, we've got Lethal Excess, and I'm pretty sure this one is actually an original Amiga game from back in the day. So, so we've got a lot here, and there is some recognizable games such as Fat Man, uh, The Cake Consumer. I'm going to just boot this one up, and I've got my PS3 controller hooked up to this, which is wired. And it automatically detects it. So I'm just going to enter this game just by pressing fire. And as you can see, it boots straight in. Now, as you can see, there are scan lines on there, and I've applied this already prior to doing this video. But I'll show you shortly how we can change that. If you don't like scan lines, there is a way around this. And if you should get insert disk to come up for any reason, just hold down on escape key. And from here, we're just going to go to the disk at the bottom and insert fatman2.adf, and that's going to load up the next disk. Thank you. 
And if I press on escape key just for a second or two, we've also got access to joystick ports. So some Amiga games will run from port two, some might require port one. So just click on this. And if we go to emulate its port, uh, we've also got an option to select which type of joystick or gamepad we can use. So gamepad, CD32, joypad, and look, I was saying swap with port one. So if you find games aren't working, then the good chance is that you need to swap this over to port one. And also under PC advice, just check if your controller isn't working. And if you see your controller listed here, just obviously make sure it's ticked. And the same for the mouse. If you're playing a game, something like cannon fodder, which requires the mouse, then just go to the mouse here. And again, you can swap over with ports. Can get a little bit confusing sometimes, but you'll get the hang of that. So to actually exit a game, all we need to do is press on stop just here. And that's going to bring you back into the arcade mode. So there's plenty of games there to play. And if we come back out of here and go into demo scene, there's a ridiculous amount of demos which are available to play straight away. So let's check one of these out. I'm going to go for Capture Dreams. So again, just like the games to exit, just hold down on the escape button and go up to stop. And OK, and we're back here. So I'm going to just minimize this full screen. And next thing I'm going to do before I show you how to import, I'm going to just simplify this just so it's easier to see what we're doing. If I go to view and mode, I'm going to switch this to tiles. And this is what I was saying just a minute ago during the initial setup for Amiga Forever, is that we can change the visuals on this once we're inside. So mode and columns in that. This looks a little bit more boring. So yeah, I'm going to stick with the tiles mode. So what I'm going to show you then is how to import games and also add artwork to these imported games. As once you do import these games, uh, there's no scraping method attached to this so you need to do this manually so i've got a game in my amiga games folder and this is the adams family and this is in dot adf file extension dot uh, adf for those not knowing it's an amiga image of a floppy disk so what i'm going to do then is actually import this one inside of amiga forever so it appears in our games folder just as so so it's literally just an easy case of just left clicking on your game or using your controller and booting it up like I've been doing so. So what we're going to do to import games is if we go to Tools, RP9 Toolbox, and from here, uh, leave everything as it is, but we need to link this up to where your games are. So in my case, what I've done is clicked on the three dots here, and my games are on my desktop, and they're in my Amiga games folder. So i have just highlight this one, select folder, and what I'm going to do is also highlight or rather check use player folders. And what this is going to do is convert this ADF file into RP9 file. And it's going to create a listing just here in the game section. So I'm going to press start task. And that's now been completed. So it's very quick. Process one game, converted it to RP9 with no errors. So just press close on this. And sometimes you might have to give this a few seconds just to make it register things. So sometimes I do find it easier to actually close it down and just reopen Amiga forever. So uh, I'm going to press Control, Alt and Delete, uh, Task Manager, and I'm going to close it down from here. So Amiga forever, just right click, End Task. And I find this much simpler than waiting. Uh, so open up Amiga forever again. 
Now, under my games folder, as we can see, I've got the Adams family now appeared. And we got no cover art for it. Like I said, Mega Forever doesn't have any form of scraping built into it. So it only accepts .png files. So firstly, I'm going to suggest you go into Google or whatever web browser you're using and just search for the game. So I typed in Amiga Adams Family .png. And it's just a case then of looking for a .png image file. So for example, I'm going to use this one just here and right click on it, save image as. And as we can see, it says save as type PNG. And that's what we need is a PNG image. So I'm going to just save this to desktop, save, and may as well close this browser down now. And to add the artwork to this, I'm going to right click on it, edit. And if I go over to the extras tab and go down to add, I'm going to make sure this is on image and press OK. And as it says just here, format needs to be in PNG. So I'm going to locate that image, which I've just downloaded by pressing on these dots, left click, desktop, and here's my .png image of the Adams family. So just left click, open, and here we go. We've even got the ability just here to manipulate the sizes of this image, but I'm going to just leave this as default and press OK. And we can also add a short description for a game. So example, uh, just Jamie is the best YouTube channel. <laughs> and I'm going to press OK. And now we've also got a description of this as well as an image. So if I press OK, we can now see that Adam's family has got an image. And if I go back to edit, and go back to extras. You can even rate this if you really wish to. So give this a five star. It's a really great game. So if I press OK, and I'm going to launch this game, but before I actually launch this game, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the screen settings. Uh, like I was saying, it's actually got scan lines on it now, but I'm going to put this back to default settings, how it was when I installed it. Uh, so for those that don't like scan lines, this is what you do. You go up to tools, options, emulation and the only option i checked here was this part and i put it on integer keep ratio if you put this to stretch to fill screen that's what you're going to get when you install it for the first time but there's a lot of options here and by the way i'm also going to put this to none under filter uh you, you've got lots of options here to make the games look exactly how you want and if you realize you put too many settings on and it just looks ridiculous then just simply go to reset all and that's pretty much it. And whilst we're under this options window, uh, if you can't find your controller for any reason, if you go to controls just here, just go to add, and under device, you should find your controller just here. So for example, mine says game controller Xbox One. Uh, don't ask why, but my PlayStation 3 controller always shows as Xbox, but that's how you do it. So with those in place, let's actually boot up the Adams family. So play.
So just remember to exit your games. It's just a simple case of holding onto your escape key just for a couple of seconds and you come back to this screen and you can then turn off. And OK. Now, some other things to mention in Amiga Forever, the Plus Edition, is that we've also got videos just here. So if there's any historians out there who likes to learn about the history of things like Commodore, then you've got a lot of really cool footage just here to look at. And we've also got a gallery as well with bits and pieces of uh, Amiga history too. And if you fancy going back to a game and you can't be bothered to go through that games list looking for it, if you go just to recently, if you just drop down to recently played, this is going to give us a short little history of the games that we've recently played. And it's added a couple which I've not actually played, but there you go. And finally, one of the really cool features about Amiga Forever is that you've actually got the ability to compress everything into a image file, a .iso. So everything you've done, all the games you've had is you can literally build an image out of this. So let me just show you how to do this. If we go to Tools, Build Image, and here we go. So the Amiga template is going to be Amiga Forever DVD. Uh, output this as an ISO image, if you want that is. And under volume name, we can call this, say, Amiga Forever, if you wish, or you can add a different name to this. And we want to set the destination for this. So I'm going to leave this as default and just put this into my documents folder. And if I go to press build, that's now going to copy all the files and create us an ISO image, which is going to end up in my documents folder. So the ISO image has been written successfully. If I press OK of this and close, let's close down Amiga forever. And if I go into my documents, we now have the Amiga forever DVD ISO. So you can burn this to disk or you can even copy this onto USB device and likely boot up of it too. So let's just take a look at Amiga forever DVD ISO. If I double left click on this, as we can see, we got Amiga files in here and we can auto run it pretty cool stuff so i'll leave that up to you and finally before i wrap this video up it's been quite a lengthy one there's been a lot to go through i'm also going to show you how to utilize your kickstart roms and different files that you can use in different emulation for amiga uh, such as fsua or winua if you just go to amiga forever go into its directory by right clicking on the shortcut and Amiga files, just double left click here. And inside of here, we got shared. And in ROM, we've got all these ROM files, which you sometimes need for things like WinUAE. And that's what I was getting at at the start of this video. Uh, I'll mention Amiga forever now and again. And if we go to ADF, we've got all of these ADF files here, which is our workbench files, if you want to use these for a WinUAE setup. And under HDF, we got hard disk files too. So there's a lot there if you're planning on experimenting with different sources of Amiga emulation. So that's it for my Amiga Forever. Kind of turned into a review in the end, but also setup guide. Uh, like I said at the start of my video, I've done tons of work around Amiga emulation since my channel's been going, including front-end Amiga emulation too. I put a lot of hours into Commodore videos in particular because Commodore is my love of retro. So like I say at the start also, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like, and also follow me on social media which I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.